In this video, I'm going to go over an example where we actually create a sampling distribution. The example is a little silly, if you will. It's not necessarily realistic, but it's still the results that we get and the relationships that we can see from this example can be used to illustrate the relationship for any possible population and samples within that population. So here we're told that Ken wants to keep track of the number of tomatoes in his garden over a three-day period. On the first day there were 14 tomatoes, on the second day there were 10, and on the third day there were 6. Now we are only considering those three days. We can pretend that a storm allowed or wiped out all the plants after the third day, so now he literally has no more days that he can do. This is the population. The number of observations, the number of days, or number of tomatoes that we, we've seen here in this problem is 3. That's the capital N for the number of observations in the population. And the grand mean, which we know is the mean of the population, if we were to add up 14 plus 10 plus 6, and we divide that by 3 to get the mean, we get 10. So the grand mean number of tomatoes was 10, and the total observations in the population was 3. Again, kind of a silly example, but we're going to be able to see what happens when we create a sampling distribution. A sampling distribution, if you recall from the last video, is a distribution of all the possible sample means for all the possible samples. Because we are dealing with a small number of observations in the population, we can actually write out all the possible samples that we could get. And we're talking about a sample size of two. So we are randomly selecting two of the observations and we're going to find the mean. And notice I'm saying with replacement. So what I'm going to do first is just to list out the possible samples that we could get out of the population. So I could randomly select two observations. I could get the observation where I have six and six. I could have the observation where I first get six and then get 10, and then six and 14. You can kind of see the pattern here. Then I could get an observation where I get 10 and 10 in one of the samples. 10 and 6, I kind of kind of went out of my pattern here, and 10 and 14. I could also get 14 and 6, 14 and 10, and 14 and 14. So if I'm randomly selecting two of the observations from the population, and I'm doing that with replacement, I listed all the possible combinations I could get, 6 and 6, 6 and 10, and so forth. Now I want to find the sample mean of each one of those samples. So if I add up these observations and divide by 2, I'm going to get the sample mean. So if I add up 6 plus 6, I get 12, and divide that by 2, I get 6. So I'm going to go ahead and just do this here. This is 16 divided by 2 is 8. 6 and 14 is 20. 20 divided by 2 is 10. 10 and 10, the mean is 10. 10 and 6, I get 8. 10 and 14, I get 12. 14 and 6, I get 10. 14 and 10, I get 12. And 14 and 14, I get 14. Now with this information, I can create a sampling distribution. I listed out all the possible samples, all the possible sample means, and now I can talk about, well, what's the probability of me taking a sample and getting a particular sample mean? So I'm going to let m be a random variable that represents a sample mean that I could get. It looks like the possibilities. I could get a sample mean of 6. I could get a sample mean of 8. I could get a sample mean of 10. And I could get 12. And I could get 14. That's the possible, that's the list of possible sample means that I could get from this situation. Now what's the probability of me selecting a sample mean of 6? Well, if you look here, 6 is the only sample mean here. There's only one way that I could get that out of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So the probability of me selecting 6 out of all the sample mean is 1 out of 9. The probability of selecting 8, it looks like that occurred 2 times out of 9. So the probability of me getting, out of a random sample, getting a sample mean of 8 is 2 out of 9. 10, 1, 2, 3 occurred 3 times. 
12 occurred twice, so 2 out of 9. And 14 occurred once, so 1 out of 9. Now, remember, this is now what we have right here in red. This is a sampling distribution for the sample mean for this problem. It lists all the possible sample means and all the possible or the probability of getting that sample mean. Keep in mind, these are the only possible sample means that we could get given our population. If I wanted to find the mean, and that's what I want to do, I want to find the mean of the sample distribution, the sampling distribution. So if this is its own distribution, I can find the mean, the expected value, by taking this column, the variable, and multiplying it by the probability of selecting that variable. So here I'll have 6 times 1 ninth. I'll have 8 times 2 ninths. 10 times 3 ninths. I'll have 12 times 2 ninths and I'll have 14 times 1 ninth. So I'm going to just write that out briefly here, 6 times 1 ninth plus 8 times 2 ninths, and I'm going to actually put this in my calculator. This is going to give me the expected value. So 12 times 2 ninths plus 14 times 1 ninth. If you remember, if you need to go back to a previous module, we talked about the expectation of a probability distribution. So this is the, expecta the expectation for the random variable m for the mean, which we also know is the mean of the means, if you will. So if we put that in our calculator, you should get, if you put this in your calculator, and if you wanted to put everything in parentheses, that's fine. If you have a graphing calculator, you could just write it from left to right, and the order of op operations would be okay. But if you put this in your calculator, you're going to get 10. What we just found was the mean of all possible means. All possible, well, I guess we should say sample means. That's what we just found. It's equal to 10. The mean of all the possible sample means was 10. What you might have noticed is that the mean of all possible sample means is equal to the population mean. The population mean was 10, and the mean of all the possible sample means, the mean of our sampling distribution, is also equal to 10. That is not a coincidence. Let's summarize this on the next page. If we wanted to summarize what we just found with that small example, we could say, if you remember what we just did, we found the mean of the sample means, which we can also call the mean of the sampling distribution. We have a symbol to represent the mean of the sample means or the mean of the sampling distribution. So we have the mean of the sampling distribution. So if I write that again, it is mu with a little sub x bar, and this is the mean of the sampling distribution for x bar. The mean of all sample means is what this represents. We found that the mean of all sample means was equal to the population mean, to the mean of the population. So we found that the mean of all the possible sample means is equal to and was equal to the population mean. What we would say about this statistic X bar. We would say X bar is unbiased. A statistic is considered to be unbiased if it targets the population parameter. And what we mean by targets is if we continue to do all the possible samples and created an actual sampling distribution of all possible samples for a statistic. So in the last example, we did a sampling distribution for the mean, and we found the mean of the means was equal to the population parameter. If we do all the possible samples and we look at the sampling distribution for our statistic, if eventually that statistic equals the population parameter, then it's, equal, it's unbiased. It eventually targets 
if we were to repeat over and over and over, it's going to get closer and closer and closer until it actually equals the population parameter. We can actually list out those parameters, or excuse me, those statistics that are unbiased. That if we were to continue over and over again re to repeat possible samples, they would eventually become equal to the population parameter. We just saw that the mean, the sample mean, x bar, is an unbiased statistic. Eventually, the sampling distribution, if we look at all the sample means, the sampling distribution gives us, eventually, the population mean. The variance, the sample variance, is also unbiased. Unbiased. Variance. We use S squared. Another one is the population proportion. And when we talk about the population proportion, that's going to be p hat. This, some biased estimators. The median, the range, and the standard deviation. In fact, the standard deviation is pretty close. If we have large enough sample size, if we have a large enough sample size, the, stamp, the standard deviation, which we know is s, gets close enough that we'll use the standard deviation, the, the sample standard deviation, to estimate the population standard deviation. So why is this important? This is important because if we want to estimate, if we want to estimate, our goal eventually is to estimate, and soon we want to estimate, the population parameter for whatever it could be. It could be the variance, it could be the mean. So if we want to estimate a population parameter, then if we want to know the mean, let's say, let's say we want to know the mean, or we wanted to know the uh, population variance, or the population proportion, then we can take samples. We can take a lot of samples, and the mean of all those samples will start to target the population parameter. So if we want to estimate a population parameter such as the population mean or the population variance or population proportion, we can use samples. And from those, and especially if we do repeated samples over and over and over again, if we were to take repeated samples, we can use samples to start to estimate a population parameter.